All right, we shall now begin with the panel discussion. Sir Marvin. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hi, thank you very much. Good morning to you all. So, I, Juan is, is really very interesting no? because the, the video that we saw earlier is that the U.S. market looks like it's not going to deteriorate, but it's not going to improve anyway because of the U.S. and China trade war. Mm -hmm. And June Trinidad explained that our economy is going to be resilient, it's going to handle that risk. And uh, April also showed some downside <coughs> in terms of the risk of the market. Yeah. What I'm really interested to <coughs> check is, can you just bring out that slide on the PSE scenarios? What I want to understand, um, do you have that slide where one is presented <coughs> the probabilities of each scenario, the upside, the sideways, and the, yeah, that one, that one, all of it. No, on the all three. Yeah. What I wanted to ask is, you have certain percentages there, one is it? Twenty percent, thirty percent upside, square root fifty percent, and six thousand eight hundred twenty percent. Yeah. Where did, did those numbers come from, and how confident are we that those numbers <laughs> are really what we want to believe? Uh, first of all, um, my bias is to allow trends to follow the trend, right? Right now, the market trend is still pointing downward. So I cannot put a higher weight on a counter trend activity. That's the reason I don't put number one as my first or primary objective. <clears throat> Second is, as April pointed out, catalysts are still not showing. So the catalysts are not there. The technicals are not married with it yet. And that's the reason that I have to be a bit more biased with either very neutral to a, to a more depressed situation rather than the first one. So I put a 50% marker into it because that's really what I feel the market should do first. <coughs> the consolidation will give you time for the catalyst to appear and might allow some other issues which have not completed their declines to finish it. Now, <coughs> sorry, there are a few stocks already and there's some evidence that there are some stocks trying to make bottoms. That will prov provide counterweight into it and that's why I'm thinking that the downside in the market may be limited in only 20% situation. And that's why the square root phenomenon is more likely the, the, the higher percentage bet. But Chebre, we're worried also about the 20% can happen. <coughs> April, you mentioned that uh, you don't expect the worst to happen. But what if you're wrong? Paano kung like the emerging markets are already up, bagsak pa rin ng market natin eh. Diba? The economy is strong but we're still down. <coughs> What is it already in the price? Uh, at where we're trading now, about seven thousand six hundred, <coughs> seven thousand five hundred. Is it already in the price? Um, it's it's already in the price as we've uh, as I've shown earlier. Right? We're already trading at two standard deviations mm. below the mean. Meaning in the past five years, um, uh, <coughs> we traded above. The said levels more than 90% of the time. In fact, parang mga 98%. Mm -hmm. nga ako. Um, and well, just going to 6.8, kanina sabi ko, I wonder if 6.8 nga, what would this imply? I think this would imply that instead of a 12% EPS <coughs> growth in 2020, we would see flat year on year. And no growth. No growth. Which is very bearish, actually, if you think about it. But paano kaya mangyari yun na walang growth? Eh, ang expectations sa GDP and nakas no. So, um, my feeling is likelihood it's not gonna happen if the economic growth is really very strong. Mm. Or yeah. if ever it does, I don't think it's something that can be sustained for a long period of time. Maybe just a little bit. So, if in case it does, it, it's more of an opportunity for you it to is. come in. You, you mentioned uh, your favorite trends or favorite sectors. No? Uh, what are those sectors again and what are the stocks that we can really look at just in case it happens? But what are the more resilient ones? Mm -hmm. So that even if it goes down, okay pa, diba? Okay, so I mentioned three sectors a while ago. The consumer sector, banking sector, and the property sector. So of course for the consumer yeah. sector, um, the topic, which is kind of new, I'm, I know, it's URC. Mm. Um, and the reason why we... <coughs> it, 
So what has changed? First of all, during the third quarter earnings results, the company convincingly showed that it was able to sustain the recovery of the coffee business, mm -hmm. which was, you know, being attacked by, you know, the other players. At medyo nagising na yung mga market leader, hindi na, kasi diba, uh, if you recall, the story of URC is, um, one of the reasons why it went up strongly in the past was because of the strength of the three-in-one, coffee, the white coffee. So, finally, new management came in. I don't know if it's 2018, 2017. They did some restructuring and they're now, um, instead of being reactive or very passive to competition, they are anticipating competition. And that, you know, the reason why we like it, aside from coffee, they're being more resilient and attacking to address other issues such as fill rates. Before, kasi they could only serve 70% of demand. Now, they're doing 90%. And aside from that, they're looking at the overall picture and being more um, rather than passive and just reacting, they're more anticipatory and they're addressing the issue. So looks like the turnaround is more sustainable, which is why people are more convinced that we've seen the worst in terms of URC. But you know, after rallying so much, our feeling is, uh, let's wait for it to correct a little. We'll have a <coughs> chance to buy it. But but yeah, so CNPF, we like it because um, because of the popularity of the new product, which is Birch Tree. Um, it's actually, because of Birch Tree, it's now no longer a tuna company, if you think about it. Because before, people always thought of uh, CNPF <coughs> as Century Tuna, and just Century Tuna. Even though it has milk, it has coconut, it has it's corned beef. Ones. But, Would you like these but yeah, with the um, so we could turn off. Birch Tree. At least it will be a more diversified company. And SSI, of course, discretionary spending. Um, sabi nga ni Jun, pag yumaman ka, hindi naman pwedeng puro tuna na lang kakainin mo. <laughs> or <laughs> kape ka, petri in one, syempre, konting luxury, di ba? Yeah. So, yan, SSI. So, but then, you know, CNPF and SSI are less liquid. So, maybe this is not for those who would like to trade, baka mas longer term investment time horizon and maybe just buy a little bit um, smaller, smaller portfolio. And then for the banks, Metro Bank, Security Bank. So I'll focus on Security Bank na lang. Kasi Metro Bank is more like, you know, it would benefit from the general trend and it's very cheap trading below one times price to book value. Mm -hmm. Ang Security Bank, um, this bank has a very attractive story because Although it's a smaller bank, what it's doing differently, it has successfully entered into the retail market and is actually growing the retail lending business by around 40%. Mm -hmm. So per year, ah, and hindi lang chamba na isang quarter, 40, tapos biglang nawala. Which is why people are really so excited about this stock. Um, yun na nga, medyo nag-rally rin. So pag pullback, talagang opportunity to buy yeah. security bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the, finally, the on the properties, um, you know, if you look at properties last year, they were actually very strong in the first half. The problem is, di ba, nung August, um, there were talks about Pogos leaving the country. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. remember, our yeah. president said that mm -hmm. China um, has committed not to interfere with our Pogo policy and we need the Pogos. Okay. So we're hoping that after this... Uh, companies were sold down. Ngayon nawala na yung mga pogo fears. It will be a catalyst for them to, you know, at least mean reversion. Um, yeah. And aside from that, yung REIT listing. Um, it's, it's very important talaga, that REIT listing. Because I remember so many years ago, there was so much excitement because of this REIT, li REIT listing. Um, for among the three of them, Robinson's actually has the largest um, rental property no? uh, in terms of NAV. It's here in my um, list. Wait, mm -hmm, uh. mm -hmm. In terms of NAV, 85% of net asset value is rentals. Uh -huh. So offices, malls, predominantly malls, yeah. which, is, which might be the reason also why the stock is uh, very popular. Um, aside from that, yung what makes Robinson's the more resilient stocks of today is the attractive bottom-up story. Um, they've 
done a lot of restructuring in the past. Um, so if you look at the residential launches, nagiging exciting na rin siya. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, an example would be the joint venture with Shangri-La, the Aurelia Residences. Diba? More than 100 million per unit, by the way. But more than 50% wow. sold in less than a year. Wow. So, I mean, you wouldn't imagine something like that from Robinsons in the past, but now they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So, parang nagiging exciting na siya. Kasi, uy, uh, talagang may restructuring, may nangyayaring iba. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then they have the Chengdu project na they're starting to book it. Yun, but very exciting for Robinsons land. So, so yeah, Ali, Mega World. Yung Ali naman, okay, let's talk about that uh, UP Techno Hub. Techno Hub. Uh, uh. Um, the reason why we're not so concerned is because that UP Techno Hub is uh, 3%, I believe. Just 3%? 3% of, of profits. Of profit. 1.7% 1. 1. of NAV. Mm -hmm. And objectively speaking, I don't think the contract is really onerous mm -hmm. because I think what um, they're paying the government really is for the lease of the land. And, you know, they built the structure, the buildings, the infrastructure. So, syempre, nung itinurn over naman yun sa kanila, talahib lang yun. <laughs> so, that's very, I mean, 20 peso during that time for Roland and, of course, you know, Ayala Land. And it was sold through a bidding. Hindi naman na parang nagkaroon ng negotiation, di ba? So, how can it be onerous from, in that respect? So, hindi naman siya onerous. I, I don't think it is. So, <laughs> we hope, we hope. <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully. But, yun nga, if they will involve naman the mga technocrats, and they, they will realize that it's not. Because a rate of 20 pesos during those days is very common. And from, if you look at the computations, parang may escalation siya every year. It's mm -hmm. not straight, eh. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, you have about uh, eight stocks here. Uh, before you leave that slide, maybe one is, did you look at the tacticals of each of these stocks? And maybe if you want to buy this, what, what could be an entry point? Or should we wait? Or should we go down first? Did you look at the stocks, uh, technically speaking? Well, um, I think for y URC, uh, I would agree with her. Um, if you have not bought URC. this. Yeah, URC first, the first issue she had. If you're looking at URC, it shot up only in the last two days, so mm -hmm. I agree with her. You probably want to wait for it to settle down. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially, that could climb back to 170, 180, maybe even slightly higher than that. So uh, just wait for it to pull back a little bit. But uh, uh, clearly, a, a trend reversal has been shown in URC. The technicals look quite good for it. In terms of uh, CNPF, uh, like I said, it's right now it's actually in a big consolidation. A couple of days ago, it actually broke down from support. Two days after, it's back in the pattern, trading only less than 30,000. So I think it's very hard to trade that stock. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, as a trader, I, I, I tend to shy away from that. SSI looks like it's trying to bottom out, but mm -hmm. probably needs a little bit more time to do so. So if you guys are going to buy, just do it little by little. And then just be more aggressive when the breakout takes place for SSI. Uh, <clears throat> the, the banks, right now, the the... To me, the safest bank is still BDO structurally, but she has Metrobank and Security Bank on that list. Mm -hmm. Both of them share almost a close similarity to the, the patterns. I'm just waiting for a bit more confirmation because if I buy that now and I'm wrong, I could be wrong in a very deep way mm -hmm. because it's creating a pattern and it's trading near the support. If that cracks now, it, we could see easily, uh, easily 5 6% drop, and I would rather wait for that to yeah. happen rather yeah. than buy it here. So mm -hmm. just a little, let it wind a little bit more. In terms of the other three, Ali, Meg, and Robinsons, Robinsons is the strongest of all three. Buy it into a pullback, just like what you would do in URC. Where Ali and Meg World, I think you guys are long term for her, and I think you've already seen it drop quite tremendously. So start there and just add along the way as, as it becomes more firm and its ability to rebound. Good, good. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the others, like the, if, for example, the upside naman. You have a 30% upside on the, on the index and 50% at least on consolidation. No? And these are the stocks that are more resilient. What the, you were mentioning uh, about the other big cap issues like SM, SM Prime, you mentioned BDO. And if in case the foreign funds really come back, um, isn't, is there a place for these big caps or like an index strategy? 
so to speak, no? index strategy for portfolios for our, for our investors to consider. And then probably add a little bit more of some of these stocks just for the kicker. Is there a place like that in the strategy uh, for investors? Yeah, so they could do a core satellite strategy where... Core satellite. Core is yeah, more core of is the... index. Okay. They will buy an index fund or ETF like FM ETF, which is listed. But yeah, um, if you have a big amount, mas bagay yata mag index fund na lang para... Mm. Liquidity Index fund. Is not, uh, I think we have so that much. in our platform still. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, can, we, still we have that. that also. Yeah. So that's the good news. Mabibili nyo na yan. And then add a few kickers so that you could perform a little bit better than the index. So I think yesterday we were talking about it. Eh kung ganun, bakit hindi na lang bili tayo ng SM, SM Prime, yes, BDO, yes, no? Yes, uh -huh. um, rather than buy the index, at least I know who SM is, I know who BDO is, no? But, you know, I would just like to, to cite examples. Because earlier on, I talked about the importance of diversification. Mm -hmm. um, so, some anecdotal examples lang. No? For example, in 2018, mm -hmm. Jollibee was a very strong performing mm -hmm. index issue. Mm -hmm. uh, earnings were perfect. And it's, but, but we always said it's expensive. And, and it, but it remained expensive, di ba? And yeah. then what happened? 2019, di ba? Oh, wala, binentahan. Kasi, um, you know, th there is always a possibility that there could be a mistake. And, mm. and Jollibee consolidated Smash Burger and it lost a little bit more than what people were anticipating. And then um, it bought uh, coffee bean and tea leaf and it's, it's also money losing and people didn't like that. So because of that, you know, the resiliency of Jollibee as a stock, as a, you know, stock market darling, nawala rin. So, and especially you have the likes of SMS and Prime BDO being, yeah, they look great, earnings are also great, but that doesn't mean that they are immune to possible mistakes. So, mas mabuti na lang index where mm. you have More a, diversified. Yeah, an exposure to 30 issues rather than you're stuck with and I think not to mention, no, the, I think the performance of index funds versus the actively managed has been historically proven to outperform. Not just here, no, it's also in the U.S., in the other countries. So it's really a very good uh, strategy to make for active managers. Yeah, pwede naman kung talagang gusto nyo yung mga SM, Jollibee, and what have you. You can buy them as kickers, like maybe 70%, 80% of your portfolio is your index fund, and by 5% or 10% in Jollibee yeah. or SM great. or yung mga talagang favorites ninyo. Great, great. So, um, ah, we have a few more minutes now. But uh, I, we, at this point, we asked the survey to customers uh, before you came here and asked you what are the top stocks in mind that you would like to, to talk about. No? And I think we prepared some, we prepared some uh, guidance platform to to show you and to explain each of these stocks, at least in the top 10, no? the ones that are most, the ones that are most uh, asked about. And uh, I think we're going to show a video of how you can better uh, analyze these stocks. And this video is a, is a uh, introduction of call advantage, no? uh, call advantage, a, a, a simpler analysis, analysis for each of the stocks. Maybe you can show the video how they can they can uh, use it. It is going to come out maybe in the next few months uh, for you to use. Let's, let's watch this. Hi, I'm Jane, your premium partner. The stock market can be difficult and daunting sometimes. That's why the Call Premium team is here to help you out. Welcome to Call Advantage. Call Advantage is a guidance platform that is designed to bring the expertise of Call Financial to your fingertips in order for you to make smarter investment decisions. The key feature of this guidance platform is a proprietary Call Stoplight system, which uses the filters based on value, momentum, and sentiment. Like a stoplight, green means go, yellow means slow down, red means stop, and oh, great! if the light is busted or unavailable. Here's what the stop light means. Value takes a look at the discount to fair value, company growth versus peers, and the analyst rating for the stock. 
Momentum, on the other hand, takes a look at the stock's trend, rallying power as shown by its MACD reading, and whether the stock is overbought or oversold, as indicated by its RSI reading. Lastly, Sentiment takes a look at the overall market trend, as well as the foreign activity on the market and in the individual stock. Let's look at some examples. It doesn't get any better than this, but admittedly, these are exceedingly rare. This combination means that 1. The company is cheap, growing, and rated a buy. 2. The stock is uptrending and has a strong rallying capacity while not being overbought. And 3. There is positive net foreign activity in the stock and in the market as a whole. This combination means that the company is good fundamentally, but it's currently in a downtrend and is experiencing some foreign selling. If you're particular about price, you may have to wait for the downtrend to stop before considering the buy. Now for some complex examples. This combination means that there are imperfect signals in value. Either it's not cheap anymore or its growth isn't outperforming the industry. Regardless, the company is enjoying strong trends and some positive foreign flows. I don't know about you, but I'll be watching this one closely. We have no visibility over its value. But the stock seems to be uptrending with a strong rallying potential. Hmm. Perhaps short term traders would like to look at this one. The journey to a richer life is easier with a little help. Okay. Okay, let's let's go through the stocks one by one no? quickly lang. The first one, that's the most popular stock that you asked for is can you just show using this VMS uh, way? Metro Pacific. That mukhang marami na nag-invest dito. <laughs> April, may pag-asa pa ba to? <laughs> yeah. So, actually, kahit kami nagulat sa <laughs> kala namin, rarali na. Pero oh. hindi pa rin. Uh, yeah, but in terms of valuation, I mean, it's really cheap to the point that even, even, even after you factor in the... Manila water problem. Mm. It's still cheap, eh, kahit i write off mo na yon. Kasi I think even if we take out Manila water, um, MPI should, is worth still 7 pesos. 7 bucks. The problem is sentiment is really so bad because, I mean, all of the businesses are regulatory. Yeah. Like Meralco, yeah, right. Toll Roads, um, right. yun nga, ngayon, pati LRT, di ba? <laughs> uh, Ini-investigate. So, Yun lang. It so what's might, the catalyst? Yeah. Ano, what's the catalyst here? Can we just well, buy it now? Wait for it? You can, you can also free, you're free to say, uh, one is if you want. Catalyst, uh, I don't know. Maybe improving regulatory environment. Kasi mm -hmm. nga, it, mm -hmm. it's, a hev it's in heavily regulated industry. So maybe if favorable naman yung mga uh, lumabas na developments on the regulatory side. Uh -huh, that could uh -huh. help. So keep uh, I think injecting the technical view here is, remember it takes time to turn a trend around. Mm -hmm. And here, you've just had an avalanche of selling taking place. People are still worried about what could happen or what will happen. And it takes time. Now, people are trying to buy this stock at this area. Imagine if you were to buy that at the low of 270 or 3 pesos, and it rallies closer to 350, 370. Whoever bought that is already making quite a healthy amount of money. And so these are the people who are taking some of their profits and what's creating resistance for the stock. So anticipate that what will happen here more likely is that it'll cascade, it'll build a new pattern, and hopefully after enough buying takes place, and eventually the stock price will, will obviously uh, reverse and turn up, assuming, of course, that uh, no other surprises come into play. <laughs> so you have good value, but, but wait, right? More or less wait for it. Next, next uh, most popular favorite, Jollibee. V value is like yellow, but the momentum and the sentiment is red. April. So for us, long term, it's okay. Um, mm -hmm. The problem is, for us, we still see no visibility on um, the turnaround of Smash Burger. Um, di pa alam kung the turnaround na this year, baka next year pa. Um, kasi when we talk to them, there's still a lot of stores. Kasi they, they explain to us that a lot of the Smash Burger stores are in subpar locations. Therefore, uh -huh. uh, you know, that, that's something that takes time to change. Yeah. And it, it may continue to lose money this year. Mm -hmm. And then, plus, of course, you're consolidating full-year CBTL. In, 
yun din, it, CBTL is easy to turn around. Mm -hmm. But this year is the first full year of consolidation, so that could mean an earnings drag. So we now. have time to wait for this stock, huh? Yeah, I think we do yeah, have time. Yeah. So next stock. Uh, may I make uh, a comment? Okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, I actually like it already. It's, oh. starting, it's, it's starting to show some degree of basing. A higher low has been presented. A gradual pullback has been shown just recently, and it looks like somebody's taking a stick to try to buy it already. So uh, I keep an eye on it already into the short term. I think you'll probably see a surprise. What's a price that you watch out for? 221? Uh, if if you're daring point? enough, start to buy it now. Put a stop maybe below one, uh, one ter what was that, 200 uh, low that it made. Yeah. And, and uh, chance it, because if it breaks out of that red line, um, you're, you're probably not going to get a good chance to buy a good price. Good, good. Next. Oh, I think we talked about this already. There's yes. good value, but momentum is bad. Yes. Maybe. Ayan, Mega World. Oh, you also explained this now, no? About the Pogo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. Uh, SM Prime, yeah. The, the land, the no, MOA. Yeah. <laughs> Well, sa amin kasi, parang maganda. If you think about it, it's the most resilient property mm -hmm. company because they are predominantly a mall operator. And ever since I started analyzing uh, my career as an analyst, never ko nakitang nag-down ng earnings ng SM Prime, especially mall, mall leasing. It's always pataas lang ng pataas. Okay, may crisis, okay, wala. It's always just going up. The mm. problem is uh, a little bit expensive for this stock. For example, um, our target, uh, so our target is uh, 42 pesos. But 42. that said, um, around 8 pesos is due to the value of the reclamation project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that our president is not inclined. Sabi niya, hindi raw niya type. Pero... Yeah. We don't know if that means titigili niya or he will allow it to proceed. Mm -hmm. So, so yun lang naman. Um, okay. A little bit risky lang. One is, will you pick this up na? Mm, Pwede na ba? Maybe I, considering not. it's a big cap na rin. Uh, it just broke a trend line, so that means it needs to go undergo a corrective swing. So, I would probably wind up a little bit more. Wind so, up a little bit more. Yeah, so I don't think it's going to have too much downside uh, activity here, or maybe up to where the green line is, which is, uh -huh. uh, I think, about... Uh, yeah, so I think maybe in this one, just, just wait a little bit longer. You, you, you might have a little better time to buy this later. But okay. I, I don't think it's going to fall so much. Thank you. Next, please. Ayala Corp. Oh, this is a blue chip that is not that blue in terms of the chart. <laughs> but it still has value, but uh, momentum yeah. is... It's, it's very value. cheap, but I understand. Maybe the reason why uh, people are staying away from it is because the first thing is the water issue. Mm -hmm. um, for, so, later we'll be talking about Manila Water, but I'll talk about it already. Mm. The reason why, <coughs> for us, mas, mas nakakatakot ang Manila Water kaysa sa MPI and DMC is because for Manila Water, 90% of the value comes from the water concession uh -huh. that is currently being investigated. Yeah. Pag hindi na extend yung water concession, uh, may chance talaga ng bankruptcy of the whole company. Manila Water. Yes, pero for Ayala Corp, at least it's just a small portion mm -hmm. of the company. The problem is when I think they, the government said it would investigate the, the UP uh, Techno Hub project. Mm -hmm. Tinamaan pati si Ayala Land, which is 49% of the net asset value of AC. Yeah. So parang dumami yung naging under investigation, which mm -hmm. of course sends, uh, hurts the sentiment very much. But that said, this stock is really very cheap. The current valuation is 2.4 standard deviations below the mean. Ganun na siya ka, mm -hmm. ano, ka yeah. discounted relative to historical averages. Yeah. And if I'm going to look at the chart, Juan, is it looks yeah. like we still have to Well, wait. this is an example of a trade called mean reversion. Mean reversion. So in other words, you buy it in the low, you try to sell it when it rallies back to the red line. But, you know, it's only if I have nothing else to trade, would I trade this? Hmm. If right now the trend exists on the downside. Okay. Next. Uh, oh, Manila Water. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Explain that already. Next. Oh, the banks. Metro Bank. Sideways now, but still good value. April. Any catalyst yeah. for this bank? It's ge in general, if we see the bank earnings recovering, um, I think Metro Bank will benefit. Siguro hindi hintay lang naman tao. Talagang may loan growth, may margin recovery. So I think this will be earnings driven. 
Mm -hmm. Next. Thank you. Oh, so another bank, BPI. This bank has been trading before no, at a premium eh, to the yes, market, yes. to the yes. industry, but now it's uh -huh. Well, actually, you know, we think it's similar naman to uh, kung kwento-kwento, similar to Metro Bank naman. Both of them will benefit if um, you know, loans pick up, margins improve. Mm -hmm. So, pareho sila. But I think maybe the reason why uh, BPI seems a little weaker is because, di ba nga, it started out having a premium because in the past, in the 1990s, if you talk about mm. BPI, yeah. best asset quality, yeah. most efficient, etc., etc. But now, most expensive, yeah. wala na eh. Parang mm. it's just another big bank. Mm -hmm, si mm -hmm. BDO na yung pinaka... I think that brings us to yeah. the next stock trend. I think BDO is the next yeah, stock. Yeah, so BDO is... The next one, the next more. slide. Yeah. Yeah, BDO. Yeah. yeah so the, the biggest bank. But not cheap anymore. Diba? Yeah, yun, yun lang ang issue namin. Pero um, I think in terms of story, it's the most exciting. People uh -huh. like it. That in terms of core income growth, it's the fastest. In terms of strategy, it's most aggressive, and uh, of course, the share of core income fees, lending income, it's really <coughs> very big. So, yun yung nagugustuhan ng mga tao. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if the flows it. really come back in, what is? Yeah, this is the example of the resilient stocks, right? Because uh -huh. they, they tend to resist coming down because they have the flows coming inside. So. Yeah. I mean, every time it trades closer to the lower band, it's a, it should be a buying opportunity for you, even though I know it's not cheap, but uh, that's what you want to keep as a core position. Okay. So I think we're running a bit late, but uh, I'd like to open the floor now to questions. No, there, there, was, there are people who sent their questions to Slido. Yeah. And I think the most popular ones will be shown uh, here. Uh, can you show that? Uh, yeah. Ms. April, property prices are so high right now, but rental rates are relatively less stellar. Do you think we're having a property bubble Ako, from spicy man? I think the problem is we're... Yung nakikita kasi natin, yung mga pre-sales. Mm -hmm. But if we look in other areas outside of Manila, the prices are not as high. And secondly, another realization, no? um, if you look in the secondary market, outside of BGC, Makati, Bay Area, the prices are not that high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Secondary market, ibig sabihin, you have to borrow money or have cash to buy. The reason why the pre-sales are a lot more expensive right now is, pansin ninyo, pagka pumunta kayo sa pre-selling ngayon, di ba zero down payment, yeah. five years to pay 50%, ganun na yung mga mm -hmm. style ngayon. That's why the prices are so much higher. In the past, you needed 10, 20% down, then hulog hulog the balance of 30, then you get a bank loan, di ba? Mas less affordable. Now they just made it affordable. But for them to make it more affordable, they have to increase the price mm -hmm. to justify it. So from that perspective, um, I no don't price think, bubble yet. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's a it's really a bubble. Because yeah. okay. iba yung presyo sa secondary market. Eh. Mm -hmm. okay. Di naman masyadong tumataas. Eh. Yeah. Thank you. Next, next. Quickly, for new investors, what advice can you give them? And what are the things they should learn first before investing? Juan, you were explaining it earlier. I mean, out of the technicals, but I think as they were talking about indexing earlier, it might be a good strategy if you're still learning what to do. Begin first with a good chunk of your portfolio into an index stock. That way, you can get your exposure into the market, especially with good quality issues. Then what you do is maybe start off 20% of what you, let's say, what you're left. You can use those to try to, to test things that you're learning about the different stock or the kickers that April was talking about. And then as your expertise grows, and if you feel that you can ge generate better returns on an index, then you widen the relationship of what you pick as compared to the index exposure that you have. But I think in the beginning, para you can get yourself started right away. Just do an index basket first, maybe do a small portion with your individual picks. Yeah, thank you. Next, was the Philippines ever relevant in recent years in emerging market allocation of foreign investments? Now, we were really underperforming emerging markets April, no? So, is it, are we going to be relevant? Are we going to hit that premium versus the other yeah. counterparts? Believe it or not, no, during the 
you know, after the global financial crisis, uh, we were the darling of mm, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, foreign investors at that time because, yeah. you know, demographic sweet spot. I mean, we were doing all the right things. We were a domestically dependent economy. We're not vulnerable. Mm. We don't have those, uh, you know, complicated GFC products, mm. right? Um, yeah, so we were relevant before. Mm-hmm. Um, kunyari lang yan, actually, yung, <laughs> yung mga foreign investors, pagpangit yung market, nagahanap ng dahilan yan. <laughs> why, why to exit? But if they see the market actually recovering, <clears throat> they do come back, and they do come back in a big way, um, and then they will come back again. So we hope we will see that by 2020 because of this economic... Uh, the economic uh, numbers are yeah. good, I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next, Mr. Lee once said, avoid stocks with bad fundamentals in capitulation trading. Is high regulatory risk enough reason to avoid capitulation trading? One is, is, it, is it enough? Um, I think uh, we may have to take that uh, a little bit in stride because, uh, <clears throat> for example, if you were to talk about Manila water and the threat is throughout the entire company, then I would avoid it. If you were to talk about MPI or you talk about Ayala Land in the techno hub, and she just said earlier that it's only one point something percent of the yeah. stock, yeah. I would not consider it uh, as that being something av- that you should avoid because it's only a small component of the en- entire company. So yeah. in a case like that, I will take the capitulation trade. But let's say in a Manila water where the threat may be the entire company, I would seriously think about it. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. Oh. I think we're running out of time. Uh, if I were to just summarize everything that happened this morning, you know, uh, the, the global economy looks like it's not as rosy because you have this US tri- and China trade war. You know, and it's, it can deteriorate, but it can deteriorate. But June Trinidad explained that our economy, the numbers that we're showing is really just too good to ignore, except that our stock market is down. And for investors, I would imagine the best time for you to buy the market is when the numbers are good and the market is down. That's the best time for you. For your new investors especially, especially the ones that are building wealth and you, are, you have money to invest and you have a little bit long term in, in strategy, that could be your best time to accumulate. Not when it's up, but when it's down. So, I. I can understand what, what Sinawanis and April are saying, that let's look at the big caps or the index stocks that would likely be the ones that will foreigners buy later on when, when maybe the dust settles or the ash fall settles down and this thing is going to bounce back. We've seen that before. Our market goes up and down and we're down. And the likelihood of it to go up is, is like 50 to 30% up no? in terms of probabilities. And I guess yeah. yeah, I just want to add yung syempre yung probabilities ni Juanes, it's a short term probability. Mm-hmm. Pero kung mas long term, if we look say on the PE bands five years, ten years, the probabilities are of course much higher. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But the question is nga, we don't know when it's going to happen. Exactly nga, we don't know and nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. We don't have control of the outcome. But what we have control of are the, the actions that we take today. What we can control are the allocations that you're going to make in your investments. Where, what, whatever your investment journey is, depending on your investment journey, you invest for the long term and allocate and manage your risk. That's the one you can control. The outcome is very difficult. Eh? But, but for what you can control now, that's what you can do. So that's about, I think, the time that we have. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. I hope we were able to guide you, to give you some information about the market so that you can manage your money well. Uh, Have a prosperous 2020 and happy Chinese New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to our panel for a very fruitful discussion. Once again, let's give them a round of applause.